Oh, hello. My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Woe. Guys, it's already time to start thinking about books that are coming out next year. That is wild. I've actually started thinking about some of these uh, over the last couple of months, especially for sequels and things that I knew um, we're gonna have follow-ons coming for 2020 that I was excited about. But yeah, just in general, um, this is the time of the year where I start like making pre-orders for 2020, start thinking through um, some of the arcs that I might try to get. And just generally, uh, I like to try to get a sense of how many books that are coming out in the next year that I'm gonna wanna read are so that I can set my other reading goals appropriately, if that makes sense. Uh, and you know, some of these are, are easier to get through than others, but anyway, it just gives you sort of a sense of load balancing wise, like how many of these I can actually get to. These are all books that are on my radar. Now, some of these I do have pre-orders for, and I will definitely let you know when that's the case. Generally, these are just uh, titles that I'm excited about coming out in 2020. Uh, and I wanted to share that with you in case you also, you know, are somebody who likes to do pre-orders or likes to kind of pre-game uh, for your 2020 book releases. So yeah, without further ado, I have got 42 titles that I have my eye on that are coming out in 2020. And I'll definitely check in uh, early in the year next year to kind of talk through developments and, and whatnot. So let's dive in. I'm going to attempt to go roughly chronologically when we have a specific release date, but I may not get that totally right. So anyway, let's do this. Okay, let's start in January. So first up is a book that I do have on pre-order and I was conflicted because the fourth book in the series mm, was only okay to me and I was like, am I gonna keep going? But then I read the description and I was like, yes, I do. I, I wanna keep going with this. So Come Tumbling Down by Shauna McGuire is the fifth book in the Wayward Children series. It comes out on January 7th. And the reason that I did, did decide to keep going in the series is because this is Jack. Jack is in this book again. And Jack is definitely my favorite character in the series. I love her, she's awesome. So uh, that like reeled me back in. I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to read this. So that's coming out on January 7th. I've got that pre-ordered and I'm very excited for it. Uh, I also made the, this is another one coming out on January 7th that I have pre-ordered that I wasn't sure if I was gonna continue in the series, but it's been long enough that now I'm like, eh, okay, I will. And that is The Night Country by Melissa Albert. So this is the follow-up to, to The Hazelwood, which came out in 2018, I believe. And it's sold as YA. I don't think it really is YA fantasy. I think it's more of like just fantasy that features young people. Um, and I kind of liked how dark the ending of the Hazelwood was, so I kind of wanted it to be a standalone, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. Who am I even fooling? So that also comes out on January 7th. On January 14th uh, is Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. And I, if you guys watch this channel, you know, I love the Six World series. Um, the first one is Trail of Lightning. And Rebecca Roanhorse, I think is edging into auto buy territory for me. But anyway, this is another uh, fantasy. I think this is middle grade though. And I'm interested to see kind of like what the, what the deal is. I wanna see another series from her that is not her, the world that she has established in the sixth world. Um, I'm also curious to see how she does with middle grade. So anyway, cause the uh, Trail of Lightning is an adult post-apocalyptic fantasy novel. So we'll see. So that's on January 14th. On January 20th is the fifth in the London Celebrity Series from Lucy Parker, and it is called Headliners. I am very excited for this couple. We've met them uh, earlier on, each of them. This is sort of like a fake relationship kind of thing. Um, there's a mystery element involved, and uh, the fourth book in the series, which was called The Austin Playbook, uh, was a five-star read for me in 2019. Probably my favorite contemporary romance that came out in 2019, so like, no duh, I'm gonna keep going in the series because I've enjoyed all of them. And then the last book I'm gonna mention is one that I am not going to buy, but I do think that I'll get online for at the library because I just wanna find out what happens even though I was pretty disappointed in the second book. That is The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. Uh, this is gonna be the final in a mystery trilogy that she's got going. I was very intrigued by the first book and felt like at the end of the first book, we really like were getting into it, but was pretty let down by the second one. So I want to read the third one, frankly, just to find out what happens, but I'm not like, it's not like I'm gonna get that on release day. It's not like a must read for me. It's more just like, yeah, I'll get online for that at the library when it gets to me, 
I'll find out what happens and move on with my life kind of thing. Then uh, on January 28th is Hunting for a Highlander by Lindsay Sands. Uh, Lindsay Sands writes my favorite historical like Highlander, like rompy kind of things. There are always like murder mysteries in the locks with a bunch of dumb hot people running around. They're campy, they're goofy, I enjoy them. So I will enjoy reading the next in that series. It also features an entire family of dumb hot brothers. So I'm assuming this is brother like number five or six or whatever it is. Um, so I'll look forward to that. Uh, then on January 28th is, a, is the next in Janine Frost's uh, newest trilogy. I haven't read the first one, but I really liked her One Foot in the Grave. Is that what it was called? Yeah, One Foot in the Grave series of vampire paranormal mystery kind of things. Um, and I've enjoyed the follow on series. So I need to get to that first one so that I can read the second one um, in this spinoff trilogy. But that comes out on the 28th. And I think that that's all of the January ones. So moving into February. First, I have an arc that uh, the author was kind enough to give me at BookNet Fest, which is The Stars We Steal by Alexa Dunn. This is a YA sci-fi adventure -y kind of thing. So she describes this as Jane Austen meets, meets the bachelors in space. So I think that sounds like a really good time. Uh, I'm going to do a buddy read of this with Jashana and Bethany. December, so I'm excited to read this actually pretty soon, but it does come out on February 4th. It is the second in her, I think, I'm not sure if it's a total series or if it's just the same world. I don't know. But anyway, it's the second book from her from a major publisher. Uh, she's super rad, so I'm very excited to get to this. That comes out on the 4th. And then also on the 4th is a book called A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane, which is a pen name for Mel Jean Brooke, who's one of my favorite sort of like speculative fiction with a lot of romance in it kind of authors. And this is a barbarian romance. And guys, I loved her barbarian novella that she had in the Night Shift anthology. So I am super excited for this. I think that this is going to be really fun. I've discovered that I really like barbarian fantasy romance novels where the politics the underlying politics are very progressive like that's a, like a niche genre that i quite enjoy so whatever that says about me and then another one that i have pre-ordered that comes out on the fourth is deathless divide by justina ireland which is a follow-up to her 2018 release called dread nation which was one of my very favorite books of that year it's a world where um it's like an alternative history sci-fi I guess kind of thing where and in, in the middle of the civil war there was a zombie outbreak and so everybody stopped fighting each other and started fighting the zombies and I really like the underlying content theme of this fantasy sci-fi dystopia type alternative history world is so good and then it's supported by what I thought was a really good story and I felt like the first book had a lot of really interesting setups I'm very excited to get to that one gorgeous cover as with the first and uh, I have that one pre-ordered so very excited for it and then uh coming out on the fourth as well apparently there's just a lot of stuff happening on the fourth is a fantasy a YA fantasy that was very intriguing to me called The Queen's Assassin by Melissa de la Cruz where it's like a, a girl who's been trained to be assassin and her entire family are assassins and it just sounded sort of like fun fantasy romp kind of stuff. Um, you'll notice that on this list, a lot of the things, so in terms of like what I tend to like for, or like what I keep my eye on for uh, when it comes to like new releases coming out versus backlist is I tend to have a lot of nonfiction. I tend to have a lot of fantasy and I tend to have a lot of romance and then a few mysteries sprinkled in. But um, anyway, this is just another upcoming fantasy that sounds like really rompy and fun. I think it's YA. But anyway, it sounds like it will be uh, an intriguing beginning to a new series. Yet another one on the fourth is uh, Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. And this is like a, a dystopian future sci-fi kind of thing. And the tagline on, or like the ending of the description says, the future American Southwest is full of bandits, fascists, and queer librarian spies on horseback trying to do the right thing. And I was just basically like sold when I read that. I was like, that just sounds really fun. I think I heard someone talking about this and saying that it was really good. So that just intrigued me. And then finally, leaving the 4th of February, apparently everything comes out on the 4th. Uh, on the 6th is Hollow Pox, which is the third in the Nevermore series um, or the Morrigan Crow series from Jessica Townsend. Still haven't finished reading Nevermore, but I promise I will. And then I'm gonna, I have the second one already, so I assume that I'll like it enough to keep going to the third. So just FYI, the third one comes out on February 6th. But you probably didn't need to know that because everyone and their mom will be 
reading it. So anyway, then another one I have on pre-order and I'm so excited because I will be finally caught up with this police procedural sci-fi dystopia series that I love called the In-Death series. And the 50th book in this series comes out on February 6th. It is called Golden In-Death. And I'm very excited that I'm going to get it as a pre-order and will finally be like caught up and just like enjoying the books as they come out twice a year. It will be great. So that one comes out on the 6th as well. And then the last one for February uh, is another one that I have a physical arc for already. I actually won this from Goodreads. So, hey, shock, ah, you can actually win something on the Goodreads giveaways. I thought I was beginning to think it might be a scam, but I finally won one. And that was something that may shock and discredit you by Daniel Mallory Orberg, who I very much enjoy in his capacity on the uh, Dear Prudence Slate podcast, which is like an advice podcast and I just love his approach to talking to people. I loved his work on The Toast before, is that what that website was called? Uh, before it shut down? Yeah, so anyway, um, I want a copy of his, I think this is sort of like personal essays kind of thing um, and I'm really excited to get to it. This will be sort of like a memoir -y thing and yeah, it should be really good. This comes out on the 11th of February. Okay, moving into March, we have another nonfiction pick that I'm very excited. I keep saying very excited because I'm very excited about all of these, okay? Um, Hannah Gatsby's 10 Steps to Nanette. And this is, I think, basically, this is basically Hannah Gatsby's memoir. Um, and Nanette was just like breathtaking. That entire special was just devastating. And I've loved her subsequent um, speeches and just, uh, just her kind of over, like hashtag I have had it officially kind of vibe she gives off and just like her willingness to speak very uncomfortable truths uh, regardless of the scenario or like the social setting she finds herself in. I think that's very cool. So that's her memoir coming out uh, on March 1st. On March 3rd is another nonfiction book pick that I have pre-ordered, very pumped for this. It's called Legendary Children, The First Decade of RuPaul's Drag Race in the Last Century of Queer Life. And I like love RuPaul's Drag Race. So I first started watching, I watched it in its first season when it was on VH1 and then it went away because it was on Logo and I couldn't find it. And then I refound it uh, when it was in its fourth season, which was like Sharon Needles and have been like an, a devoted watcher ever since. Um, so I am very excited for basically what I think is sort of like a, an oral history of Drag Race, but then also like talking about how it's reflecting like the development of um, queer history in the last decade or like how it reflects overall trends in queer history. I think that'll be super rad. Also on the third uh, is Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. Peter Swanson is a mystery slash thriller, thriller writer I have not yet encountered, but I think that this is a serial killer novel where um, the main character is an author and a serial killer has started using his mystery novels to serial kill people. Um, and that I'm a sucker for that kind of a premise. So I thought that this might be a good one to, you know, try him with. Also on the 3rd, I think March 3rd is becoming the February 4th of, uh, of this, of this month, um, is a Mindy McGinnis novel called Be Not Far For Me. And I have never read any Mindy McGinnis, but this is like a survival story set in the Smokies and I'm from Knoxville. So like I grew up hiking in the Smokies and I don't know, it's, I think that this is sort of like a hike gone wrong, uh, horror adventure type novel and yeah i just thought that this of her, the descriptions of her books this is the one that has most intrigued me so far and uh, i i dig her what it seems like is her project in terms of thematic content so i thought this might be a good one to give uh her a try with then on march 10th is the sequel to the bromance book club and that is undercover bromance by lissa k adams i absolutely loved the bromance book club and the only thing that kept me from like i i really liked it what kept it from being like a favorite for me is that the underlying trope of it which was like marriage in peril is one that i struggle with in contemporary romance especially if it's meant to be sort of a rom-com and so i couldn't like 100 percent get over that this is gonna be one where the underlying uh, tropes are much more to my liking. So this is sort of, I think like a hero in pursuit, fake relationship kind of thing. And I, we already know the main dude in this one. Um, so that comes out on uh, March 10th and I'm gonna pre-order that one. Very excited for it. Cause I just love the first one so much. Okay, and then the next one is The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren, which comes out on March 24th. Now, if you watch this channel, you know that I really like Christina Lauren, but I tend to really prefer them when they're in their romantic comedy vein. And I think I'm gonna get better 
in the future at only picking up their releases that are more on that end of things as opposed to the ones that are a little bit more on the angsty side. And the one that's coming out, The Honey Don't List, uh, in March sounds like it's much more their romantic comedy version of what they do. And it sounds like just super delightful. It so basically the setup of this one sounds like it's two assistants who are on a road trip and they are trying to keep their bosses like life together like they're sort of like beleaguered work colleagues who are on a road trip and end up falling in love i think and they are assistants to two stars of what are clearly meant to be sort of like the gaineses from hgtv um that series and side note i can't tell you how i know this but allegedly from what i know um chip in the gaineses is kind of a nightmare uh, anyway allegedly no no proof of that but that's what i've heard from uh interested parties who have experienced them so anyway moving on that whole book sounds like much more like the kind of christina lauren book that i tend to enjoy so that's on the 24th and then on the 26th is the city we became by nk jemison now i have not yet read nk jemison that is a part of what i am planning to do before the end of the year i am going to read her collection called how long till black future month but like Everything I know about her tells me that I'm gonna love her. And this is like a future, like post-apocalyptic kind of sci-fi type book where cities have a soul and like it's in the future and they're trying to save the soul of the city, I think. I don't know, but it just sounds really fun and she seems great. And I really want to like more of her. And I think I keep, for whatever reason, I'm very intimidated by her uh, Children of the Earth series, the one that starts with the fifth season. I don't know why I feel so intimidated by that, but I do. So I want to read How Long to Black Future Month. And then this might be my next one just to sort of like get me in the groove with her um, before I tackle another one that I find for whatever reason a little more intimidating. Um, so there's that coming out on the 26th. And I think that that's everything I have for March. So moving into April. So on April 30th, I have Skincare by Carolyn Hirons, uh, which is a nonfiction book from one of my favorite kind of beauty YouTubers or beauty influencers. And Carolyn Hir Hirons is sort of like the skincare guru of the online beauty community. She's like the grand poopa of all things skincare. She's an esthetician and I don't know, just like if it's approved by her in general, you know, it's pretty solid stuff. I think she she does have a lot of really expensive stuff. But anyway, I just am curious to um, see what she says. It's called Skincare, the No Nonsense Guide. So, you know, I have surmised a lot of my skincare wisdom from YouTube. So I would like to hear what she says, like in her official capacity as like an actual professional in the field. So there you go. That's on the 30th. Also on the 30th is The Girls and the Stars by Mark Lawrence, which is book one in the Book of Ice trilogy, I think, that he's going to have coming out. This is in the same world as the Book of the Ancestors series, which you guys know. One of my all-time fan favorite fantasy trilogies, probably. Um, I absolutely loved. I've read two novels and a novella in that series this year, Grey Sister being my favorite. Anyway, it's so good. I really enjoy that world a lot, and I'm so excited we're going to get to spend more time in it because it just was really intriguing, and I think there were a lot more stories that could be told, so I'm very excited, and I think that this is going to be from the perspective of somebody who is in more the ice regions of that world. So I'm intrigued to learn more about that. So those are the only two I had for April. So moving into May, on the 5th, we have a book that I have already pre-ordered because it comes from my mom's. So I have to read it. And that is Trixie and Katya's Guide to Modern Womanhood. Like I was mentioning earlier with RuPaul's Drag Race, I have been a fan since the show began. And these two, Trix, I like Trixie. Katya is my all-time favorite queen point blank. Like I love her and I love them together. So I'm very excited uh, for what that is going to be like, just so you can see the, the cover here. I love the seventies vibes of this. I just can't, I can't wait. Um, I loved, uh, um, whenever it's out. Yeah, it's just fantastic. So I'm very excited for that one. That one I have on pre-order as I have the next one on pre-order, which is Network Effect by Martha Wells, which it comes out on May 5th. And it is the first novel in the Murderbot Diary series and the first book in the Murderbot Diary uh, series, which is All Systems Red, so far is probably my favorite book of the year. I just think it's a textbook perfect novella. I absolutely loved it. I've enjoyed the rest of the series. None of them to me were as good as that first novella, but I'm still happy to keep reading in the series. So this will be the first um, full novel that we have because they've all been novellas. So I have that pre-ordered and I'm very excited for it. 
I'm a broken record. I'm very excited for all of these. Okay, and then on May 21st, I think, because Goodreads, I'm not sure if this is an error. I hope that this is an error because I had seen this listed for 2020. So I'm thinking, and they've already, they did a big cover reveal. Surely this is coming out in 2020. But Goodreads is saying this is May 21st, 2021. And I think they're just wrong. So anyway, it is the third book in Helen Huang's series. And it's called The Heart Principle. The cover is gorgeous. That series is so great. And I think Helen Huang is just bringing a really fresh perspective and a fresh take on contemporary romances um and yeah i'm just like super into it very excited to see kind of how she continues to grow and this third book has kwan as the main character and we have seen him in both of the subs the first two books and i have just been waiting for him to get his book so i am very pumped for that because i just really like those books they're really fun and just uh, yeah like i said i just think they're fresh so that's on the 21st or 24th. It, should, it shouldn't it should be in 2021. It will be in 2020. I'm pretty sure. I think Goodreads just has that messed up. And then on May 26th, I'm going to read you this description because I don't think I could, like, I think you need to hear it so you can understand why I'm very intrigued by it. It is called The Gilded Ones. It is by Namina Forna. And it says, uh, the start of a bold and immersive West African inspired feminist fant fantasy series, fans of Children of Blood and Bone and The Black Panther. In this world, girls are outcast by blood and warriors by choice. 16-year-old Dika lives in fear and anticipation of the blood ceremony that will determine whether she will become a member of her village. Already different from everyone else because of her unnatural intuition, Dika prays for red blood so she can finally feel like she belongs. But on the day of the ceremony, her blood runs gold, the color of impurity, and Dika knows she will face a consequence worse than death. Then a mysterious woman comes to her with a choice, stay in the village and submit to her fate or leave to fight for the emperor in an army of girls just like her. They ca are called the Alaki, near immortals with rare gifts, and they are the only ones who can stop the empire's greatest threat. Knowing the dangers that lie ahead, yet yearning for acceptance, Dika decides to leave the only life she's ever known. But as she journeys to the capital to train for the biggest battle of her life, she will discover that the great walled city holds many surprises. Nothing and no one are quite what they seem to be, not even Dika herself. So the reason I'm so excited for this is that I am hoping that this will give me the kind of like world and thematic themes that I did really like in Children of Blood and Bone, but I was pretty let down by the actual plot and characters combined with everything that I love about the Poppy Wars series where it's like training, you're going to the city, there's like an emperor and a war. Like I'm hoping that this is gonna combine both of those things to give me a fantasy series that I'm going to just love. Um, so anyway, I'm excited for that. That comes out on the 6th of May. Then on June 9th, we have Dragon Unleashed by Grace Draven. If you watch this channel, you may be thinking to yourself, self, didn't she say that this was one of her favorite 2019 or like most anticipated 2019 releases? Yes, it got pushed back again. It's gotten pushed back basically a full year at this point. So it's finally going to come out in June. I have it pre-ordered. I really like the first one. I love Grace Draven. So here's hoping that we finally get the second one because it sounds even better than the first and I'm ready for it. Okay, and then moving into July. So some of the some of the things that I'm excited about don't have actual release dates. We'll get to that. So the months are getting sparser because some of them we don't have exact dates for. But anyway, so July, that was all for June. For July on the 7th is a book called The Unconquerable Sun by Kate Elliott, who is a fantasy author I have been wanting to try. And all it says is sold as a gender bent Alex Alexander the Great as space opera in a series of linked volumes that tell the story of an imperial conquest and how it breaks down after the death of its charismatic leader. And that just sounds really intriguing to me. I think that this might be a good one to get going with her on um, since I haven't tried anything from her yet. So I'm intrigued by that. I may pick that up. And then moving into August on the 15th, we will have the fourth in Tessa Dare's current series, which is called Girl Meets Duke, which is the bride bet. And it's like uh, uh, two people who are engaged but hate each other kind of story. So I think that that will be, be pretty good. Tessa Dare... I pretty much never lets me down. I don't think I've ever read one from her that I didn't like. I like I like them better sometimes than others, but like I've never read a bad book from her. And then on August 31st, we have the sequel to Serpent and Dove, which I read and really enjoyed in October. I'm very excited for the sequel, which is Blood and Honey. And that will be coming out on the 31st. Uh, we have a lot of loose threads that were left at the end of the first one. So 
I'm assuming that the second one, we will get some of those threads resolved. Then moving into September on the 15th is Displaced by Alyssa Cole. And I know nothing about the actual content of this book. I just know it's Alyssa Cole, who is a romance author, who is, I think, like kind of one of the darlings of romance. Like she's one of the best authors writing right now. She writes fantastic historicals. She writes fantastic contemporary stuff. And this is going to be a thriller from her. So I'm just intrigued. Like I'm going to be really interested to see what that's like um, because she is just a really good author. So I'm always excited to see when authors who already do well in a certain genre branch out. Um, it's just always interesting to see what they do. So that's September. And then sometime in October is a book called A Golden Fury by Samantha Coho. And I was just intrigued by the setup of this one, which is a fantasy type alternative history thing. So it says, is it science or magic power possession 1792 with Europe in the throes of a revolution, a teenage alchemist is on the verge of a discovery that will change the course of history, but the cost may be her own mind. So I've seen some good buzz about this and that's an intriguing premise to me. So um, I'm definitely gonna have my eye on that for October. And I think that's all of the books where I have a specific release date. So now we're just going to run through ones where uh, I know it's coming out sometime in 2020. A lot of these are sequels and uh, I'm just because they're going to come out next year and they're in a series I like, I have my eye on them. Okay, so first up, the third book in the Six World ser series from Rebecca Roanhorse will come out sometime in 2020. I'm very invested in that series. It is uh, becoming one of my favorite series uh, that of that ilk. So whatever that is, I will pre-order it. I will be excited for it. The fourth Witchlands book from Susan Dennard will come out in 2020. That's one where I am going to wait until the whole series comes out and do a binge read because they are so detailed that I was finding myself forgetting the details between the books and therefore not, like I was getting to the point where I wasn't enjoying it as much. So I want to go back and just do like a full binge of that series. Um, but the fourth one is coming out in 2020. Then the second book in the Iron Covenant series from Alona Andrews, it looks like that's gotten pushed into 2020, which doesn't surprise me just based on some of the other releases they've had going on. But that will be the second book in the series with Hugh Dombre and Elara. Um, I really like the first one, so I'm intrigued to see what happens in the second one. And speaking of Alona Andrews, we will also get the next book in the Hidden Legacy series next year. That's the plan. Um, it's book five overall, but it's the second book in the current running trilogy. I absolutely loved Sapphire Flames earlier this year, so I have no doubt that I'm gonna love that one as well. Also, it's Alona Andrews, and you guys know I have a lot of very deep love for Alona Andrews. Then something else that's happening next year is that there is going to be a new series from Rebecca Roanhorse beyond just the, so there's the Race to the, the Sun, which comes out earlier in the year. And then sometime in addition to getting a third book in the Six World series, we're going to get the first book in a series called the Anasazi series. It's called Between Earth and Sky. And the summary is the great matriarchal clans of a prosperous cliff city vie for power against a backdrop of political intrigue, celestial prophecies, rising rebellion, and dark magic. I like I said I think mm, maybe it's probably time to say unless I just hate this uh I think Rebecca Roanhorse is an auto buy for me I just really love the way she does fantasy I love the way she does world building she's also own voices for indigenous American indigenous um people she's uh, a part of the Navajo um, tribe, or, or I guess it would be Dine, that is, that's what they refer to themselves as. And so I think that she, she always builds her worlds from that mythology. And it's just really fresh, interesting, and authentic. Um, it's just, and she's just a really good writer. So I really enjoy, I enjoy her stuff. And then uh, coming on 2020 is a new series from Penny Reed called Handcrafted Mysteries. The first one's called Engagement and Espionage. And I think that this is going to be taking a couple that gets together in her beard series and giving them their own mystery romance, like romantic suspense spinoff, which I think is just a cool idea. So I, one of the things I want to do in 2020 is catch up with that beard series. And uh, I, if, assuming I like that, which I think I will, I will be intrigued to see what their spinoff series is like. Then we will also be getting the follow-up to Well Met by Jen DeLuca, which will be called Well Played. And I'm pretty sure that this is, is his name Mitch, the dude with the kilt? I think it's his book. So I'm excited. Well Met was one of my favorite books of this year in terms of contemporary romance. And just generally, it was a really just cute, fun, um, slow burn romance 
at a Renaissance fair. So what's not to love? So I'm very excited for that, that follow-up. And then last, the last book that I have on my radar right now is a new book from Garth Nix of Sabrielle fame, which was a very formative series for me when I was uh, in middle school and high school. It's called The Left-Handed Booksellers of London. And it says that it's about a young art student, Susan, who comes to London in 1983 in search of the father she never knew and is drawn into the arcane business of the booksellers whose secret sideline is to ensure that mythic entities and dormant legends do not disastrously intrude into the modern world. So um, I'm always, I really like Garth Nix, just basically on the goodwill of Sabriel. And then I'm always down for something involving a bookstore, bookshop, book people. If you add in like a secret society and mystery component, I like it even more. Plus there's fantasy. So there's just a lot of trope things in this book that sound like they're things that I would probably like. So whew, that does it for all of the books that are on my radar right now for 2020. So that was a journey, guys. I know that was a lot of books. Like I was saying, I do tend to, my new release focus tends to be on authors I already know and like, or in uh, nonfiction, romance, and fantasy or sci-fi. Like those tend to be the front list things I have my eye on most. But uh, as we all know, more things will come up between now and early next year that I will have my eye on. And I'm sure that that list will increase, so. We'll talk again probably in February uh, of next year about what I'm actually really looking forward to once we get a few more launch dates and a few more things get announced. So stay tuned for that. But definitely let me know below, what are some of the books that you are most excited for for 2020? Are you like, girl, I can't even think about 2020 right now. I'm just trying to get through 2019, whatever. Let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I think that will do it for this video. So if you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you are having an absolutely lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.